What's up everybody, Chris Blevins here. Welcome back to the channel. Last week in November, we're out here again in La Jolla. Right now we're up at the pier. We're trying to make some greenback mackerel. I got a nice tank of bait already. It's about 6 a.m. Let's see how much more of this bait I can make. Still trying to decide which direction I'm gonna go. Currently the current is kind of uphill. Current's pretty slack, but slowly coming out of south. I'm thinking about heading up north off the beach, off the beach here, but let me see if I can get a couple more swipes in the mackerel. We'll get on the move. It's been a couple weeks since I've been out here, so I have really no idea what's going on. No reports. Um, and I think I'm the only kayak out. Launch was completely empty this morning. It's a holiday week. Thanksgiving just happened, so probably you know people are out of town or it's too cold or whatever but um we got the cold weather gear on and we're out here on the hunt hopefully we can find something hopefully we can find some of this wintertime action but for now let's see if we can make a couple more mackerel all right looks like we got some bait bubbling up on the surface right here let's see if we can get another swipe of this mackerel A lot of you guys over the years have asked me about making bait, how to make bait. Um, I feel like this is a kind of a, this is a very beginner and a very elementary skill. Um, for those of you that don't know about sabiki, so we use a sabiki, which is a bait making rig that has a bunch of little flies on it. So it's got a bunch of little flies on it with small hooks. The idea is you're trying to catch mackerel, sardines, any small fin bait, or any small bait of any kind that'll bite it. And then you can safely release it into your bait tank and use it again. So it's called a sabiki rig. For all you brand new people out there, um, you'll go to the bait store, get yourself a sabiki, get yourself a couple of them. I like to use a pretty heavy torpedo weight. I'll use anywhere from a four ounce to an eight ounce with six and a half being like my ideal torpedo on sabiki. The reason why I like to use heavy weight is because when you catch a bigger greenbacks, bigger Pacific mackerel, they're gonna swim up against the weight. And what'll happen is if you have a light weight on there, like a two ounce, a three ounce, um, the mackerel will swim up against your weight and you will end up getting them all tangled up. So the heavy weight keeps those bigger mackerel um, separated so that they don't tangle up your sabiki because anyone who's fished with sabiki knows that as soon as you get a mackerel that like rolls up in your sabiki then basically your sabiki's trash and you might as well just throw it away and get a new one it takes a long time to untangle and most likely you're probably going to stick your finger with one of those little sabikis especially when it's super cold and your fingers are numb and you got a slimy mackerel in your hand yeah leave me a comment down in the chat if you've ever stuck your finger with a sabiki um <laughs> Another thing is I don't like to use sabiki rod for various reasons. Maybe I'll get into that more one day, but for now, suffice to say, I don't like to use a sabiki rod. I like to use just a full-size yellowtail rod um, that I would use. This is my um, kind of my jig stick that I'm using right now. So yeah, right now we are making bait right by Scripps Pier, the pier at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Probably a lot of newer people don't know that this is actually a protected area. There's two um, MLPAs in La Jolla. One of them is a, is a reserve that is full closure. The other is a conservation area. So the La um, I gosh, the name's slipping my mind right now, but I'll put the name of the reserve. Uh, I believe it's the La Jolla, it's the Scripps Conservation Area. Anyway, Used to be back in the day, maybe 10 years ago, you were able to fish here um, for, at the pier and north, up north of Scripps Pier towards Torrey Pines. But that is no longer the case. There's now a conservation area between Scripps Pier and up by Black's Beach, wherein you can only take uh, small pelagic fin fish, which as defined by California Fish and Wildlife, I believe includes mackerel, sardines, and anchovies taken by fly, meaning sabiki. So you can only fish for bait here. You cannot fish for yellowtail, you can't fish for halibut, um, or any of those other fish. And I don't believe you can fish for squid either. Uh, invertebrates are no take. So, um, just a little friendly reminder for some of the people who are visiting from out of town. Um, so make sure you're going far enough north and that you're out of that conservation area. Otherwise, 
um, you're in jeopardy of, you know, getting fines. And I know the fish and wildlife has been more um, persistent about uh, enforcing these things. Make sure you know where your boundaries are. Um, and I will leave a map right here in this video to show you um, the exact GPS coordinates and the areas for the conservation area where those lines are. Mark them in your GPS or whatever you have, or mark them in your phone or whatever, and then just make sure you're outside of those areas. Just make sure you're following the rules and, and uh, within the legal, the local regulations, and those things change all the time. So maybe you're watching this video five or 10 years from now. Uh, make sure to check back in with California Fish and Wildlife and, and make sure that you're up to date on all the closures, because you know, they're just, seems like they're just closing more and more areas. Not really making any more bait, and I got a full tank, so let's go see if we can find some bigger marks. I'm still trying to decide if I'm gonna go north or if I'm gonna go over to the cove, but I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. All right, we are about a mile and a half north of the pier. We're just coming up on the conservation area reserve line. So, seeing lots of birds and bait kind of splashing around out here. I haven't seen any big marks yet but seems to be a good amount of life up in this area. I'm gonna put out a Carolina rig once I um, make it up here past the conservation area. And I'm seeing some bait splashing around, so it could be a good area to kind of drag my Carolina through and slow down, slow down my drift a little bit, maybe do a couple of laps bouncing in the sand. But yeah, it looks like a lot of birds and mammals out working around here. Have not seen any sign of the bigger fish yet. Let's take a look. Hopefully I didn't make the wrong decision by coming up here. Dang, got bright real quick. Went from like 50 degrees to 70 degrees in about 30 minutes. Sweating now. I was freezing this morning. Get my sunglasses on, let's get this Carolina rig out. All right, we've been up here, up the beach for a little over an hour. I've been dragging around my Carolina rig. I'm trying to get it to bounce in the sand. I got a pretty heavy egg sinker on there. I think it's about a four ounce sliding egg. Uh, it's on 65 pound braid. Actually, that rod has 80 pound braid and a 40 pound um, copolymer leader. So I can cruise along at about a half a mile an hour to a mile an hour and still have it kind of dragging, bouncing occasionally, and, and kind of hitting the bottom occasionally. Uh, I can feel it kind of dragging and the egg sinker kind of dragging along the sand, which is what I want, because I'd like to get a pick up a halibut bite if I can. Saw a bunch of birds and stuff working up here to the north and it looks promising early around gray light, but then it's kind of looking dead up here now. I'm not seeing a whole lot of bait and um, there is a little bit of bird action outside a little further, but my meter is pretty blank and um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity up here. I'm probably gonna do one or two more laps kind of dragging my My Carolina rig in the sand and then I might just beeline it back over to the cove. We're about Let me look at my GPS Yeah, so it's probably about two and a half miles to the cove from here um, and that goes over the canyon, so we're going over some real deep water. Um, maybe I could drag a fly line, or I could maybe drag my Carolina rig on the way over there. Depending on if there's a bunch of grass and stuff floating in the water, it's... Water looks pretty clean today, it's kind of nice. So we don't have a ton of grass or kelp or kind of junk floating in the water, so it's easy for me to confidently keep dragging my Carolina rig behind me. But that Carolina rig does have a tendency to catch grass and flotsam a little more than like a straight fly line but anyway yeah so i'm probably gonna do another lap around this area here up north of the conservation area and if i don't see any sign improving i'm gonna probably i'm gonna probably make a beeline over to the cove and just scout around like i said haven't been out in quite a while so i don't have super high expectations for finding anything especially considering there's no boats out here super nice morning 
temp's already up to about 70 degrees. Got a nice little tank of bait. I'm gonna loop around here a little bit more. If I can't find much, I'm gonna bounce out. All right, let's do it. The zone that I was looking in didn't produce the results that I wanted. There was a bunch of bait working up there, huge columns of it. I'm still over a bunch of bait now, here in 160 to 190 feet. But I have not seen any bigger marks. I haven't seen anything pushing it around. I haven't seen the bait wall off. Um, there is birds kind of scratching at it slowly, but I'm not seeing the predatory fish that I want to see. So I'm making a move. I'm out here deep. I'm outside of the... Uh, I'm outside of the zone that I was fishing earlier and I am, you know, fishing my Carolina rig. I'm kind of trolling it, medium speed, kind of mid column through some pretty large bait clouds, hoping to pick up a random bite. But I am more or less on my way back to the Southwest to try to head back to the cove, to see if I can do a couple drifts over in there. Um, so I got about two miles I got to make from here. So it's, uh, kind of a paddle but um so yeah i'm gonna go back into the conservation area bring in my lines and then uh once we get to the other side of the canyon we'll drop back down again see if we can see any marks near the near the reserve yeah i really thought i was gonna get a bite there for a while but i was drifting with my dropper loop and my carolina rig i had two baits out and still couldn't pick up any bites or get any interest bait wasn't even really reacting to my uh to my setups so anyway beautiful morning out here we're gonna keep at it we're gonna search around for some more bait search around for some more life hopefully we'll, we'll find a place where we see some marks and uh, maybe we can drop the dropper loop or the iron on their heads winter time this time of year I'm looking deeper typically um, I'll probably go in take a look at the edge of the kelp but for the most part I'll be sticking in around 120 to 160 feet I did see a super cool Tino for um, it's like this crazy jellyfish thing with like crazy lights and stuff I got some video of it but the water is pretty murky so hopefully I can touch up that video a little bit and, and you can check out that tinafore. I'll leave a link below that shows you the exact species of tinafore this is but the thing is pretty cool it's like a looks like some kind of like alien basically check it out jellies and the sardines and the mackerel they're all feeding on some kind of small plankton so definitely a lot of life in the water not seeing the big game fish but I was expecting to see him any minute. I'm actually pretty surprised I haven't had any bites or seen the fish. So we'll keep out of here for a little while longer. I got to head in probably just right after lunchtime, but um, I still got some lively mackerel. I got plenty of bait. So let's go check out the, uh, let's go check out the cove, see if we can find anything. I want to ask you guys a question. If you could leave me a comment and let me know below or reach out to me, however, but I, I was curious. Lately, I've been shooting in higher resolution on my GoPro. I've been shooting video in like um, 2.7 and 4K and 60 frames a second. It looks a little different. I think that the higher resolution video looks better and it's worth handling. But the thing is, is it takes up so much space on all the SD cards, it takes up so much space on my hard drives, and it takes like much longer to render and upload to YouTube that, that, that high def, that 4K video. And to me, when I watch it on YouTube, I mean, it looks better, but I can't see that much of a difference, honestly. So really all you're seeing is like detail of dots and crap on my face or like ink on my eyebrows. <laughs> but uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's worth it for me to keep uploading in that high def or is 1080p, I guess previously 1080p was considered high def. But, um, you know, what do you guys think? Is it worth it for me to try to upload in 4K? Do any of you care? Or do the majority of you just watch it on your... Do the majority of you watch this on your phone and so the 4K video even make a difference? Do you guys even care? It would save me so much time to not handle the high def video. Um, but then again, some of the shots are so cool that it's much better in high def. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Most of you are watching this on your phone. I don't know, maybe you're, most of you are watching it on a computer. I know if you're watching it on TV at home, it does make a difference. Because when I turn it on my, you know, on my 4K Samsung, I can really see the difference between 1080 and um, 4K. But let me know what you think. Wanted to give a quick shout out to Western Outdoor News for putting on the Big Fish Challenge every year. Um, I, I don't know, I might have been canceled last year due to pandemic, but the 
this year they put it on um unfortunately they couldn't have like the banquet or the closing ceremonies or whatever but i ended up winning a weekly prize for a 28.8 pound yellowtail uh it was one of the fish that i caught in one of the videos from before uh 28.8 pounds definitely did not win the tournament for the largest yellowtail but it did it was good enough for the weekly prize so i ended up getting like a pack of some nice circle hooks and some fluoro and i got this shirt so shout out to western outdoor news thanks for putting on the big fish challenge it's a fun tournament to do every year uh, and it's a great opportunity for kayaks to kind of mix it up in the tournament against some larger boats and even the sport boats so um thanks again and uh, we'll look forward to it next year it's just ridiculous out here it's like 80 degrees, pretty much glassy, sheet glass conditions. Not much current though, plenty of bait around. Kind of surprised we're not seeing any whales. See if any whales pop up here. Seems like good conditions for the whales when there's that deep, deep fin bait or deep plankton. Just getting back to the cove. I'm in 800 feet of water. All right guys, we finally made it to back to the south side of the canyon. Probably took me about an hour or so. I wanna say it was almost three miles from where I was fishing before. But now we're here in 160 feet of water in the cove. And there's a bunch of these birds sitting here on the surface that are kind of just chilling. I'm not really seeing a ton of bait that they were on before, but I wanna show you kind of what I'm looking at here as I'm coming up into shallow water. I have my Carolina rig out the back. Right, it's a ways out the back, but I'm going, trolling it like a mile, mile and a half an hour. So it's suspended up off the bottom. It's probably like halfway up in the column as I'm cruising along with my greenback. But now I'm in 160 feet of water and I can see the bottom pretty clearly. Pretty clearly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my 83 kilohertz and show you kind of what I'm looking at as I'm coming up onto the, to the flats here. Yeah, so you can see my call, like, not really anything on the sonar right now. Around 50 to 100 feet, there's a little scattering layer, and that's nothing. That could be plankton. That could be this plankton bloom that's going on right now. It could be, like, the thermoclines right there at, like, 80 feet, um, and that plankton's kind of uh, aggregated there on that level. But what you'll notice is that I can see the whole screen super clearly. Like... This bottom half from like 100 to 150 is just like completely clear. So anything that swims through there, I'm going to be able to get a really good look at. It's harder sometimes if there's a bunch of clutter or if you have like random scattered marks everywhere in the column, then it's hard to differentiate between what's bait and what's just junk and what's bigger fish. Um, in this case, I have a really clear return. So it's easy for me to take a look at this and see when I'm coming over a thick cloud of bait. So as we're rolling up here in 160 feet of water, um, let's take a look and see. I'm expecting we're gonna find some bait or some marks between somewhere between here and 160 and up in like 100 feet of water. Uh, so let's take a look. Oh, we're on, we're on. We got something. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go. We're right over it. Could be a shark feeling kind of sharky. Ah, damn it. 
past it. Shit. I think it was a shark. Let's feel my leader. Still got my weight. feels like a shark, but my line is super nicked up. Dang it. I'm not sure. That could either be damage from a shark or it could have been a bigger fish. Ah, oh, fuck. I hope that was, that might have been a real fish. I don't know. Kind of feels like it found a, like the, whatever it was, it went into a rock somewhere because this line is 40 pound and it's it doesn't look like my knot broke. It looks like it was cut off, but damn it. I think that might have been a good bite. Hard to say. I'd say 50-50 chance either it was a shark or it might have been a real fish that found some structure. I'm not feeling like the sandpaper on the line. Usually a shark's body will abrade the leader. Oh uh, yeah, I kind of am feeling a little sandpaper right here. Kind of thinking it was a shark, but let's get another bait down and see what's going on. See if I can. I'm gonna have to retie this Carolina rig, so for now I'm gonna drop my dropper loop down. I'm not. I'm not totally sure that it wasn't a fish. I didn't have any marks, but my Carolina rig was way back behind me. It might have been a fish that found some structure, found a rock, and just broke me off. Because I felt the line like a pink. You might be able to see it in the video, where I had good tension on it, and then it, I was straight over the top of it, and I could feel the weight there, but then um, I felt the line just kind of go pink. Like I could feel like it was stuck on a rock maybe, and it came, popped off. Or it could have been, the shark's body and as it turns its tail and body will hit the leader and it can screw up your leader that way. It didn't feel like a yellowtail run though. Usually a yellowtail as soon as it knows it's hooked you'll get that super long consistent steady run with head shakes of just like you can really feel it. That felt more sharky or maybe sea bassy. Felt too aggressive to be a halibut though and I don't think my Carolina rig was on the bottom. I got my dropper loop down now. I gotta retie this Carolina rig. I think that's 50 pound fluoro leader too. It'd be really hard for a f fish to break me off on 50 pound fluoro leader. Nick, looking at it now, I can see it's actually the 50 pound. It's not that copolymer 40 pound that I have as my top shot. But let's put a new leader on. Work our way back to that same zone. Using a little smaller hook this time. A one out live bait hook for this. I'm gonna put one of my smaller mackerels on, see if I can drag this thing on the bottom. Not seeing any more baiter marks.
All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, bring the dropper loop up, send the Carolina rig back, and then put the dropper loop back down. Otherwise, they'll get tangled right now. So watch this. Mackerel swimming like a champ, but my shit's all twisted. Yeah, it sucks when your dropper loop gets all twisted like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch it out. Take it, make sure all the twists are out. Crank it down, hook it up, and then get some bend in the rod. Put some tension on that line, that'll stretch it back into place. We got our fresh Carolina rig that we just tied on. 50 pound floral leader. Let's take a look and see how messed up my dropper loop is. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it's still a little loopy, but I think for the most part, I got the twist out of it by stretching it. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my Carolina rig out and keep trolling with it, kind of slow trolling. And, and then I'm gonna put a bait on my dropper loop I'm just gonna let it swim here beside the boat with me. And then if I see any marks that I like, I can drop it. This thing's got a 12 ounce? Yep, 12 ounce torpedo. So this thing will get down 160 feet in like seconds. All right. Got a nice little green back. I'm just gonna hook him, stick him aside, and let him swim for the boat by the boat. Hopefully you can't get in my drive thing. Nice. Mackerels, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just going ape shit right here next to the boat. I'm gonna leave it up so I can troll around at like a mile and a half, mile per hour. And then if I see bait or if I see marks, then I can just flip that switch and it'll go straight down. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video. Pretty slow today, very nice though. I had tons of good bait. I didn't really have any bites except for that one that I lost, that fish that I hooked up on and lost. I'm still thinking it was a shark, but you never know, it could have been something good that just got freak, freak occurrence and broke off. Um, <sighs> can't dwell on it too much, but it's been super fun. I'm gonna release my bait and I'm going to uh, pack it in. As always, thanks to all the new subscribers and to the longtime subscribers. I really appreciate you guys and all the support you've given the channel. Until next time, see you at the launch.